Last video, we left the Rio Dulce of Guatemala. We also made three attempts to leave Belizean waters and fight the northerly winds, pushing us down away from our destination of Mexico. Finally, the wind shifted a little from the east, and on the third try, we awoke in the morning to the familiar Mayan Riviera coastline on our beam. We finally broke through the weather barrier and into Mexican waters. Passing Playa del Carmen, we were speeding along, relatively smoothly, with the current helping us along in the right direction. Robbie trying to get one last fish in before we would reach Isla Mujeres, where we would check into the country. Stop whining and reeling your fish. <laughs> we went through a patch of seaweed. Well, I'm just trying to look cute. Isla Mujeres feels kind of like home to us now, surrounded by the shallow, clear waters that we have sailed so many different times on so many different vessels. The red light is supposed to indicate the shallows called Bajo Pepito, the shallows of Pepito. As far as cruising spots go, this place is a welcoming one for sure. Although when we arrived at the anchorage, we found out that it was rather crowded, and we had to circle around quite a bit to find the spot. We're going to do the reverse of the checkout that we did just a couple of weeks ago, and we're going to do the check-in cha-cha here at Isla Mujeres. We were so delayed in our arrival from Guatemala that the authorities made our captain write a letter of explanation about why we took so long. The trip should usually take four to five days. We took a week and a half, almost two. But other than that hassle at the port captain's office, the immigration at Isla Mujeres is a very friendly bunch of folks. We handed off Choco and some of our bags to our parents because we would have to take the ferry and buses back to our own boat. We're, good. we're doing good time. Yeah, we're doing good time sailing. <laughs> we said our final farewell to our gracious host, Kevin, and then we jumped onto yet another boat. This one traveling a little faster than what we've been used to. We were very excited to get back to our own boat and meet our brand new to us engine which had been dropped off at the dock while we were away in Guatemala. Finally, hopefully, all the hard work of wheeling and dealing, trading and bartering, boat parts and time would finally pay off into being able to have auxiliary propulsion on in Esperado again. Our friend here with some jet skis let us use the small crane to bring this engine out of our friend's other friend's truck. In Esperado is right across the canal here. And the so-called new engine. Then we need a coupler to connect this to the shaft. We already have, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, we have the Ah yes, stuff. Jean sent us a, a stuffing box from an old boat. Which we found in the garbage, which might just be the one we're looking for. <laughs> this is where we connect the accelerator and this is the gear, which is... That's the gear. Yeah. And I can run it. Those are the decompression levers for each, for each one for each cylinder. Or my, maybe this one is boat and this one just one. So that means you can turn on the engine with just one. You crank it and you just you start one cylinder and it'll go tum 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 tum. And then once you pull out the handle, you can technically close the second and then it is fire. Yes, it's a very easy and, and the ideal thing you do is you make a, a chuck here and you get a nice 18 volt 
Kaya jack and you go brum, 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 and it starts your engine. Oil pressure gauge. That's your oil filter. Electric sensors clip onto here and then this will give you an analog reading of the oil Yes, pressure. I think that's it, yes. Fuel comes in here, it goes to the, the rocker pump and then that gets pumped to the to the filter into the uh, fuel pump which is in here where the timing gears go there and then that sends high pressure fuel all the way up to the injectors which are up here which are inject into the cylinders these are your heads and then these are the the valves that's the starter motor right there which is belt driven that will turn the flywheel and start the engine and the cooling system is this is a raw water pump which runs coolant to the engine that used to go to a cooling tank but now it's going to go to a heat exchanger it's a dry exhaust so we have to get a new exhaust elbow made that comes up like this where the exit that means there's no water coming out of this exhaust it's dry because the cooling of this engine had uh, coolant circulating through the engine that was going to a cooling tank I think in the key to the boat, that's what he said, something like that. So we would have to find a part called a heat exchanger, which brings up seawater to cool the liquid coolant, which circulates throughout the engine and keeps everything from overheating. We started by taking some measurements. So we, we have to clean it, degrease it. I might take a few things off. For example, it is unnecessary in the engine right now, which is a steel piece. Just give it a, a scrub down, take out the, the starting motor, give it a clean, take out the air filters, clean them. Get fuel in it and start the sound. The hardest part was shaping up to be the task of finding parts, such as the heat exchanger, so that we wouldn't be forced to run corrosive seawater directly through the engine. And I, not too much for running an engine to salt water. It's convenient, but it really kills the life of the, of the engine if it leaks and stuff. While putting the engine inside the boat, it became apparent rather quickly that actually creating the right space for the engine to sit in was going to be quite challenging as well. Here you can see that the old engine sat very high on its supports. The beginning is just knocking off the rust. I'm kind of getting an idea of how it's built for the motor. But I still don't see it. The coupler that attached the shaft to the engine was quite a bit more complicated than the stuffing box and the simple new coupler that we have in mind for replacing those old rusty pieces. We would also need new engine mounts. The original yellow Vetus engine that we removed last year around this time was quite a bit larger than the new little green thumper that we have now. The parts list and requirements for installing our new Volvo MD2B was quickly growing. When in doubt, clean it out, is what I always say. Yeah, we have a geologist uh, just in Newwood, uh, finely and delicately brushing uh, what looks like to be a green two cylinder saw. We wanted to be certain that the engine was still in fact running before we truly started getting into the task. The nice cradle that our friends had built for transporting it here would have to be rearranged so that the flywheel could be able to spin freely. Yeah, it's turning. It's turning pretty good, too. Robbie could tell by the feel of the spin some of the characteristics of our little knocker. If it has low compression, it might need new rings. Keep an eye out for those things if it runs. I'm wrong, actually, these. That looks brand new. Before starting it up, we would have to check out some of the more small details, too, like the water pump and impeller. The part number there. It's one of those that has a little set screw there. There is two washers usually there, two seals, like little seals there, and they stop sea wa water or coolant or fresh water from getting inside the engine. And we have to make open and inspect and see, you know, you can take out this and you just have pressurized water going through it and you see if it leaks. That's the engine casing. There's a, a gear there. There's gears that is probably the same ones that power the, the fuel pump and there's oil circulating in there and you don't want the water from this going in there. It's on a cold day, you, you know, primal fuel there, and then... This is how you 
sit nicely. How pressurized does it get? Not much. We wanted to check the oil and the fuel filter too. And I worked on some more superficial aspects as we built up the courage to finally start her up. Let's tie it again. Let's wire. We had a little cable trouble using some old battery cables at first. Yes. I'm gonna just gravity feed the diesel into the engine. And then we also had trouble priming the fuel pump. And then we moved up to using our good battery cables sent to us by one of our patrons. But with a little coaxing and a little care, our stinky oily beast started to come alive. Gas, uh, one or two cylinders, uh, two, let's see if it fires on both. stop after a while, I don't know why. Using the boom and its halyard, we were able to move the engine from the dock to the cockpit, and now from the cockpit into the boat. We were already starting the demolition of our bulkheads to fit everything inside. Little did we know, this would only be the tiny beginning of a very intricate destruction process to get this engine nicely settled inside. Mm -hmm. 